This is Dan Abbott. I'm making this video for my class at Southern Maine Community College in CAD management in response to a few questions that people had about the second auto lisp assignment that involved automatically creating a layout, naming the layout, doing a page setup manager in the layout, um, all with a list program and then inserting a title block and having that insert title block come in. But people were concerned about, about dealing with the viewports. So I put a notice, an announcement on our Brightspace page just pointing out a viewport's an entity. It's like any other AutoCAD entity. You want to erase it, you pick it, you erase it. But the problem I think people had is you're thinking viewports are somehow a special category of entity. And they're not a special category of entity in a sense. You can still pick them, theoretically rotate them. You know, it's got some limited, it works a little differently. But as far as managing it for the purpose of the assignment, you can just assume that if you select it, you can erase it. So. I indicated here what you'd have to do and in order to do that you want to go to the command line in AutoCAD and just figure out your strategy typing a negative layout will bring up the layout command and allows you to go through create a new layout then it allows you to go and set that layout once you set it you go to it I have this little P space which stands for paper space which just to make sure that you're not in an active viewport which you wouldn't normally be in a brand new drawing but it's possible if you had something already set up that you have a viewport that's active this goes back and makes it so it's not active, then you use the erase command. Then M view. Now, to get things set up for this, though, start by you opening up the title block that you're planning on using to insert. That title block should be in model space, not paper space. It should not be an actual block definition. No block definitions in this drawing. It should not be an inserted block, simply lines, um, attributes, whatever you want to put in there, text. Put it at zero, zero, so you can know you how you can manage it and now go in and get some information from it because you're gonna make a, a viewport and my viewport would be something that fit exactly inside that title block which means you're gonna use the polygonal option of M view for multi view so I then go in and do some ID you know it's at zero zero here say okay how far over does it go 13.5 and zero make a note of that just write it down I'm doing that right now and then go and do the ID command on the next place that has to change which is right here that's going to be 13.5 as well but this time instead of 0 it's going to be 1 and you notice I created this title block using dimensions that are easy to remember easy to deal with next one's going to be 25 comma 1 and then you go here and it's going to be 25 comma 1.75 write that down then come over here for the this one and that's going to be 34 1.75 etc just go through this whole thing you write all these things down now when you in your program once you've created that viewport using those values do that before moving your title block in other words you're gonna bring the title block in at zero zero and then go ahead and do your viewport because now you know what the numbers are then you can just do the move command all move everything from zero zero to the location that you know will center it which you're gonna have to try in advance so now if we go to a new drawing and in that new drawing I go to negative layout and I say I want to make a new layout called arc dash oops, arc dash D then I go back in, and you notice it shows up down here as arc D. I go back in, set, arc dash D. Now it's the current layout. P space, just to make sure you're in pot paper space, erase all, enter, it's all gone. Now you can go ahead and insert your title block, but before you do that, you have to set up a page setup. So dash page setup. I say negative because it really so now you get here and you're going well I don't want blue beam I want something else well you could go through the process manually to check and see what's going on or you could type a question mark which is the best way to do this because now it'll list all the available plotters for you now it doesn't go all the way down through until you do that but you'll notice there's some very long kind of convoluted names here and what you need to do is put them in exactly the way that they show up here. And the easiest way to do that is to go and find the one you want, copy between the quotation marks, copy to the clipboard, now bring it back up here, paste it, enter, now it's going to ask you for the paper size. Type a question mark, um, F2, and what we're going to want here is arc 
probably not full bleed. Let's go arc expanded D 36. So once again, and this is one of those things where I've tried this typing it in and I never quite get it right. This is why I'm going to have you copy and paste. But you go between the quotation marks, come back up here, and when you paste it now, it should work, and it does. So then inches, and you're going to keep track of all these things as you go so that your program can do that. You want it landscape, upside down, no. Um, and the plot area you want, well, this is going to depend on how you like plotting. You can plot the layout, which is what I'm going to do here, instead of um, a display. Sometimes, depending on the plotter I'm using, I'll plot the display and then make sure it's centered. Or I'll plot the, I'm sorry, not the display, the extents, and then make sure it's centered. In this case, I'm going to plot the layout. Now, one-to-one -one is what you want um, for plotting unless you're plotting a check print. This is D-size. One-to-one -one is going to mean it goes on a piece of D-size paper. Now, the page setup offset, I'm, not, I'm going to leave that because that's something you would manage later on if you didn't set up everything correctly, but I don't need to worry about that. Yes, and the plot style table, that's going to be monochrome. Again, do the question mark, press F2, come in here, find monochrome, copy everything between the quotes. You want to be careful you don't have a space at the end of this either. Paste, go here, plot with line weights, yes, no, yes, no. Now you'll notice I've got my setup here. So now what I could do is go ahead and insert my title block. So I'm going to insert that title block, and the one I'm going to insert is the one called D arc. A couple ways I could do it, but I'm going to do it by knowing what the name of the drawing is. I can't remember where it is. So let me just do a save as. So that is in the title blocks architectural D arc under the R drive. Okay, so you need to know that because that has to be part of what you put in here for the insertion. So you say negative insert. The block name is going to be R colon backslash title blocks. There's another one, by the way. <clears throat> if you go to Windows Explorer, I was looking for something. I've already got that, so that's something I was searching on. It was taking a long time, so I left it. If you go in here, find the location that you want to use. So in this case, I go to the R drive, I go to title blocks, I go to architectural. That's where it is, so I'm going to start with that, and that's what I'm going to put in here. So that, and then a backslash. Now, don't forget, in Lisp, you're going to have to do a double backslash or a front slash. If backslash had something means something else, but that gives me the, the path. Then I'll go in, and again, you know, you can just copy it, or I could have actually typed that one. That would have been easy enough to do. But now if you do a copy-paste, then you shouldn't have to worry. comes in like that, 0, 0, enter, enter, enter. And then this all fills in. Now, if you don't want to fill that in every time you do it, you need to turn attribute request off. I think you already know that. So we'll just cancel that one. And then it comes in like that. Now, here's the thing. This title block was already, you know what? This title block was already set up and offset. So that point right there was not 0, 0. Let me see what it is. Yeah, that's over 0 0.25 and 0.25. So I can just leave it the way it, where it is and then type in my values. Or I could move it and then move it back. But either one of those is going to work. If I typed in the values, I'd have to add 0 0.25 and 0 0.25 to every single one of them. So then I would go to the MV command. And I would say I want to make a new viewport, polygonal, starting point 0.25, comma 0.25, enter, and then I'd look down and I'd say 13.75, comma 0.25. It'll go over to there, and then these are all absolute coordinates now. 13.75, comma 1.25, because my title block was designed in a certain way so that those numbers are through 13.5 and 1. I'm just adding 0.25 to each one. Oh, you know what? I modified this title block, so I am now going to undo this, go back to before I had the title block inserted. Go back over here, and what I forgot to do in this one is save that. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to save it. And I'm just going to replace the one that's there. Good. 
now I'll go back to this drawing where I came in here. I want to make sure I don't have a block in here, which I don't. So then negative insert, block name as my block name, but I, I'm not going to go in. Well, I think maybe I can. R colon backslash title blocks backslash architectural. Hmm. You know what? I mean, I need to check and see. Yeah, I, I actually, I'm just going to copy and paste just in case I messed it up. And then the backslash right here. So I do this, enter 0, 0, and then this 1, 1, 1, 0. Again, I would turn attribute request off for this so I don't have to go through and, and do all the things. Now we're going to move that. We're going to move that over and up in a minute. But now I go to my MView command. And now in the MView command, go to polygonal, and I can say from 0, 0, 13.5, comma, 0, to get over 13.5, comma, 0, to go over to here. And then 13.5, comma, 1, 25, comma 1, 25, comma 1 1.75, 34, comma 1.75, and we'll go through the rest of it, 34, comma 23, and then 0, comma 23, and then close. Now I've got a viewport that's shaped exactly like my view, my uh, title block, all in the program. So now I want to make sure I'm in paper space, which I am. So now I'm going to do a move, all, enter from zero comma zero to 0.25 comma 0.25. Now it centers it more or less. Well, okay. So what I've discovered here is what I probably want to do is use full bleed instead of what I had before and the architectural I am arc D so here's a case where you either modify your title block so it fits in there or you change the sheet size that you're using I'm gonna let you worry about that I mean either one of those would be easy but what happens is this the sheet size that you pick depending what you pick you have more or less room in this particular case yeah, what I would do in this particular case is change my title block, and I would change that in my original drawing. And if I take a look at this, I would just kind of estimate how much room I've got here. Because you can't really snap to the printable area, but if I brought it down here, that total distance isn't very big. So if I dropped, brought that down a tenth of an inch, just to keep be able to remember it, I could go over here, go to stretch, take that, go straight down, make sure it goes straight down. 0.1 and then go back over here and I'm going to edit this to do the same thing. But again, you want to do this before you save your title block. And make sure that it fits whatever plotter you're using and there's going to that's going to vary a little bit depending on where you go to work. So now you notice it comes down here. Now my viewport, you know, is based on the existing title block. So now that I change the title block, that gives me two new numbers to use here. Again, you want all this to happen in the context of the um, the program, the list program itself. So you know how to do the insert part, you know how to do all that others. This now does a, a, a setup for you. And now if you go to right click on Page Setup Manager and take a look, you have a page setup for that layout. It's um, DWD to PDF if that's what you want. Monochrome Oh, you know what? I copied monochrome style table instead of monochrome color table. That's what I want. So again, when I went back, if you go back here, I just picked the wrong one. I picked the first monochrome that I could see. So all the way back here, when right there, when it asked me for what I wanted, that's the one I picked. I should have picked the one that said CTBD instead of S. 
So now you know. Anyway, now you've got a setup all set up. You make a command that'll do that, bang, it sets it up for you every time. Again, you could also make that centered a little better once you bring it in here. It's worth fiddling around with this until it's just right, and then make your program, then you never have to fiddle with it again.